Yeah, I'm from Brooklyn. I was born in Brooklyn. Um, my dad was a piano player. He played the organ and uh, and the uh, piano, and he played uh, for his father's church. My grandfather, who was a bishop in a uh, Episcopal African Episcopal church in Brooklyn, that Marcus Garvey oh, started. A-M-E. Yeah, exactly. And uh, my grandfather was a bishop, and my father was the uh, organist. And my father would switch off with his cousin on alternate Sundays, and his cousin was Winton Kelly. Who you, who you guys know. Mm. So, um, you know, one Sunday my father played, the next Sunday Winton would play. Winton couldn't read music or anything, so he would just learn the service by, by ear. And he was always jealous of my father who could read. And my father was always jealous of Winton because Winton could play anything he wanted. You know? So um, anyway, yeah, I grew up in Brooklyn and then we moved to Queens later on. And uh, this was the 70s, so the big music at the time was R&B, like <coughs> funk, Sly and the Family Stone and, and all that stuff. And I was really into that. I went to music high school. You lived in Brooklyn. You was in the rock and roll. No, it was, it was like more like funk. It was more like James Brown and that stuff, you know. Then um, I went to high school and I met a drummer whose name is Kenny Washington, right? And he was my age, but he walked around like he was 45 years old in high school. You know, he was only he didn't mess around. He was only into into jazz. And he said to me, "You're talented, and you need to take it to the next level because all the best musicians they play jazz." I love music. I wanted to be one of the best musicians. So I said, well, teach me. He lived all the way out in Staten Island. So I would go on Sundays, every Sunday from Queens to Staten Island. It took about two and a half hours. I had to take a bus, a train for an hour, a ferry, and then another bus to get to Kenny's house. But when I got to his house the first day, he played me King Oliver. And that whole day, he just took me all through the whole timeline of jazz, right up until the 70s. He played me all you guys' music. It was un- unbelievable. Because this guy, like I said, he was my age. But he was like a little, you know, master of jazz. Historian. Yeah, historian, exactly. Mm-hmm. And he played me everything. And every music he played, he told me the stories. He told me what the guys were like. And I said, I got a cousin. I think he plays jazz. His name's Winton Kelly. He goes, do you know who he is? I said, mm-hmm. well, I don't really got to admit, I don't really know who he is. I just know to throw his name out there every once in a while. And he played me Winton's music. And he introduced me to Miles and all this stuff. I went home and went in my father's record collection and, and discovered this whole thing was right under my nose. Mm-hmm. So the rest of my life really was just trying to combine the, the two things I love, which was that funk music that I first got introduced to and this jazz music that's such an incredible music. And um, I got started in the studios in New York. I was in the house band at Saturday Night Live. I met a lot of musicians there. I met Luther Vandross and Roberta Flack and David Sanborn. And uh, Miles had been in retirement from about 75 through 81. And this period I'm talking about for myself was 81 when Miles came back into, uh, he decided to come out of retirement. And he was trying to put together a band and somebody gave him my name, said, you should call this young kid. And I came in there and, uh, you know, you know how Miles is. I got a phone call. I said, hello. He said, Miles Davis, can you be at the studio an hour? And I was like, where? He said, Columbia. So it was great. I didn't have time to, to flip out or get nervous or anything. I just had to get to the gig. And uh, he asked me to be in this band. and. Um, I played in his band for a couple of years, and then later on I started writing music and producing for him. So uh, the biggest thing that I remember when I first met him was that I thought he was at least like 6'5", six, 6'7", six, because he was Miles Davis. And when I met him, he was like 5'6", you know what I mean, or however, you know, he was, he's, he's, <laughs> he's a little guy, you know what I mean? So, you know, it's amazing how... Um, little man with a big crowd. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, that was my first impression of Miles. So what do you think, man, being so young? And all of a sudden, you're working with Miles. I think that's the best way for it to happen because when you're young, you don't know any better. You know what I mean? Oh, so you, you, say you just you, you, drummer player. Yeah, well, no, I, I, I knew I knew he was Miles, and I was. I would be excited. Yeah, I was. I was nervous, oh, yeah. but but now I'd be even more nervous because I now I know how big it is. You know what I mean? How important <laughs> yeah. it is. You know, at then I was just, oh yeah, Miles. Is, oh, this is nice. You know. <laughs> um, I know once I got when the first day I played with him. I got in my car and I was like just sitting there just I just played with Miles Davis I didn't even know he was still alive you know because he had been in retirement for so long mm-hmm. and I turned on the radio man and someday my principal come was playing on the radio with Winton with my cousin Winton playing the playing the piano <laughs> and he was like okay young boy it's your turn 